Hey guys, welcome to TDF on our new YouTube channel. I'm James and this is our FW20. It's part of our TDF Works program and it's just coming towards the end of its restoration. We're going to talk you through it and its history and uh, when we get it back on track next. So as some of you petrolheads may well know, this is a 98 Williams. I uh, was driven by Jack Villeneuve in the day. I had some quite good success right up until the point I had a massive shunt at Spa. Had a couple of podiums uh, in Hungary and Germany. This car has been restored back to its livery from Germany. So it will be as period correct and how it finished on the podium. So the accident this car had at Spa is like super famous because he did the same thing in, in 98 and 99. Williams actually repaired the chassis after the accident um, and used it as a test car. And at the end of the year, once they were finished with it, they dropped it completely as all the F1 cars do and it left in storage. It got painted into the BMW livery, which is also quite iconic. When we collected the car um, as part of our stock, it came to us, it was in full BMW livery, no engine, gearbox that has nothing in it and nothing else on it. No radiators, no electronics, no systems. And they're things that we've had to go back through during the restoration to be able to piece it back together and get it back into a position now where it's ready to go back on track. The owner of this car is US based. Uh, this is his first step into 90s F1. He's got a big collection of cars. Part of what we're trying to do with TDF Works is about the ownership of these cars and being able to get them back on track. This car has had a full ground up restoration, every nut, bolt, electronics, Everything in the car has been spoken about with him. He's been part of the process the whole way through. And now we're at the point today, finally, where we're gonna to get to fire the car up, bring her back to life, uh, and get ready for shakedown, which will be its first time on circuit, and our first time to really start to dial the details in before we hand the car over. To get this up and running, uh, all I'd need to do is we have a water heater here. We would just connect that up to the various points that we have around the engine. Uh, that will cycle, to begin with, cold water, but it will gently heat it up, up to about 60, 70 degrees. It depends on how cold it is on the day as well. All the rads will get warm. The engine itself, the block will get warm. I've got a message on the dash that tells you it's cold so that you, you don't start it while it's still too cold. That message will go away. You're then free to start it up. We'll then go through a warm-up procedure, getting the engine oil hot as well, so that you're not sending it out with cold engine oil. So now we're gonna um, get the water heater on. It's gonna take an hour or two to, to warm up. While it's doing that, we'll probably just check a few of the sensors, just make sure everything's reading correctly. We'll do a gear run, make sure the gearbox is working okay. This is a, a Judd V10, it's a four litre motor. Originally this car would have had a Mechachrome V10. Unfortunately, they're not readily available. Uh, they've either been scrapped or damaged in some way, often deliberately so that people can't get hold of them. One of the big things we have to deal with is getting the wheelbase correct for the car so that things like the floor, the bodywork, all the fixings that mount the floor to the underside of the car have to be in the right place. Luckily with this engine, it was very close in length to the original motor. We made a, an adapter plate that adapts it to the original Williams gearbox. We're not actually far off what they were doing originally. That brings our wheelbase back to original, keeps it correct, it means all the bodywork, the floor, and all that fits as it would have done with the original motor. One of the advantages of using this Judd, it's a lot easier to manage than the original engine was. All we really need to do is preheat this. We're not allowed to start it below 50 degrees, as long as we're above 50. Um, we can crank it, it starts up straight away. Complications with the original F1 engines is you have hydraulics, a lot more electronics, a lot more sensors. They're a lot more sensitive to things. We don't have to prime it or flush it or bleed it or any of that stuff. We can just literally warm the engine up, fire it up, and that's one of the great benefits of putting a Judd in an F1 car. It's not original, no, but it makes it a lot more usable. And if you want to go out and go and play with your car somewhere, it's a lot easier to use this. You'll get the same power. This is still 800 horsepower, pretty much what the original engine was. It's actually got more torque. So yeah, it just makes it an all round much easier thing to live with than having an original engine that's um, so temperamental. Now the engine's all warm, ready to, ready to fire up. 
We'll come over here and we'll get our starter motor. So this is what we call an off-car starter as opposed to your road car that will have an onboard starter. What we do with this is there is a drive in the back of the gearbox here. It goes into there, slots it into the crash hooks here. And then we'll plug the battery on, press the button on here. That will crank the engine round via the gearbox uh, and the car will burst into life. What we'll be looking for at this point, we will do a crank in what we call P1. P1 is ignition off, so it won't fire. There's no fuel, no spark. It will just crank the engine over, get all the pumps turning for scavenge for oil and the main oil pump. That will bring up engine oil pressure. So yeah, we'll give it a spin up for a few seconds. We'll get oil pressure, make sure that that's all good. After that, we click it over into P2, which is ignition on, fuel pumps on. So you'll hear the, hear the fuel pump run. It's now ready to fire up. So we'll now press the button on the starter and it'll crank and it will will fire up. Whilst it's running, I will be keeping an eye on the oil pressure, making sure that doesn't drop at any point. If it does, I'll turn it off immediately. Uh, then it's just watching all the other pressures, making sure fuel pressure's there, water temp's all fine, that the oil temp is coming up nicely. Um, yeah, just generally keeping an eye on all the sensors and making sure that there's nothing untoward going on. done our first fire up, download the, the data. So on here we can see what the RPM was at idle, which is a little bit low, about 16, 1700 RPM. It wants to be closer to 2000. In the air temp, coolant temperature and engine oil temperature here. Throughout the run, you can see how it began to increase towards the end of the run there. Down here we have oil pressure, which is this lower line. This Judd runs quite low at idle on oil pressure. So it's sitting about 1.8 bar. At idle there, fuel pressure there, which is 494 kPa, so it's just under five bar. We'll probably bring that up a tiny bit. And then yeah, battery voltage down the bottom here. Not charging very well at idle, but you can see it does pick up when you when, when the engines come up as you rev. So it will be charging on circuit, it just doesn't charge very well when it's idling in the garage. Now we're happy with, with the data, the initial fire up's good. We'll probably do a few more just to you know dial a few things in, but then yeah, once once you're all happy with that, we'll get a day for a shakedown booked uh, and then start putting things on the load and really sort of refining, especially gearbox control stuff, getting all that nailed down. We don't have to be to F1 levels of, you know, the smallest amount of gear change time. It just needs to be safe and it needs to work. Now that we've done some, some gear runs on the stands uh, and it being all new internals, freshly designed gearbox as well, I'm going to take everything out. Have a good look at everything, make sure there's no damage. Got a few little sealing issues to sort out where it's having a bit of a dribble. So we just need to find out what's going on there. Get it completely leak free, that's how I like them. And um, yeah, put it back together. And then we'll go and do the next stage, which is shakedown. So yeah, now fire up is done. Pretty successful day, so can't complain at all. The gearbox will all come apart now. Um, we'll check all the systems. We've got to go back through all the data because we've got absolutely tons of it to get through. And then part two of this is going to be going to circuit getting it back out and making sure that, you know, all the fine details are correct before we hand over to the owner. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I can't wait to get back in this and do some mileage. We've got loads more private F1 content to come and loads of unseen stuff from everybody here. So uh, like and subscribe and all that usual YouTube stuff and uh, we'll see you on the next one.